What's going on, guys? This is James Allen. I am recording this on Friday, August 30th, 2024. And in this video, we're going to talk about the data models of Cityscape. And this is actually a video that's long overdue. Speaking of which, let me turn off my cell phone so that uh, people don't blast me in the middle of this video. So the data models of Cityscape, uh, well, the data models of any app, to be honest, is probably one of the most important things you do. Uh, this is probably one of the most important core components you do when you're building an application. The reason why is because um, how you design your data model will dictate uh, how the data is stored in your database, whether you're using a SQL or no SQL database, it doesn't matter. And more importantly, it will dictate how your uh, queries are made, right? Your get and put queries, basically when you're saving and retrieving data from the database, it also depends on how you architect that data model and a database structure. So uh, it's a very important topic. Uh, if you make a mistake there and in the future you find out that you've structured your database incorrectly and that your data models are lacking certain key components, you could have uh, you could you could be forced to do an expensive re-architecture, right? And no one likes to do migrations and stuff like that. So again, this is one of those topics that you want to go slow. You want to talk to it with another engineer, get a, another, get a different perspective at least. I would not design any data model by myself. In fact, um, uh, when I design uh, the data models I'm about to show you, I came up with the initial design uh, and all that stuff, but then I went over it with William. Again, William was um, my former business partner in the Cityscape venture, and we're currently working on re-collaborating again with Cityscape. So, that being said, I think I've said enough. Uh, I put together a presentation, which I'm going to show you the, uh, the the major the major data models of uh, the app. Uh, we're going to go over that presentation and wrap it up with an outro. So let's hop on Keynote and uh, let's see what we're working with here. All right, guys, uh, we're looking at the presentation that I've put together covering the data, the data models, and this is just a cover page where you see the logo of Cityscape. I really think it's a cool logo, but let's get going. Uh, the first slide is where I show the five major objects that the data models revolve around. So we have a model for the user, a model for the locations, a model for the worlds, and a model for the stamps, and lastly, a model for the connection. So there's five uh, objects or data models, as you could call it, they're interchangeably. You could use them interchangeably. So there's five major objects. And again, this is object-oriented programming. Uh, and let's get into what those fives are, what the data structure look like, what do, what do these models look like, okay? So the first one we have is a user. And at the very top, you could see the data model for a user. It has an ID, which is a unique identifier. It has a username. And again, string is just uh, any uh, characters, any alphabetical characters. So the ID is a hash of strings. The username is going to be a username like any other user. You have an image URL because uh, the image itself is stored in a bucket somewhere and the bucket gives you a URL and that URL link is saved to the data model of that user. You have a gender and in this case I chose the gender to be a boolean because you could either be, be male or female. Let's not get political here. And since it's male or female you could either have a true or false value or one and zero. Uh, you have a goal, which is a string. It's basically a string of characters that the user could set. So the user could write a goal in the app, and that goal would be saved to that uh, model for the user. And you have a world ID, because if you remember, a user is part of a world, and uh, each world will have its own unique identifier. Again, worlds are subcultures like tech, LGBT, uh, surfers, skaters, military. So a world is a subculture, and these worlds have are objects too. And uh, part of their um, uh, object structure, part of their data model is to have a unique ID. And if the user is part of a world, that unique ID of that world um, uh, would be assigned to that user as well. Anyone familiar with any sort of relational database know what I'm talking about. But this is going to be set up in a NoSQL structure. So we don't have to worry about like having relations or one-to-one -one relations or one-to-many. It's just a world ID will be attached to the user model as a string. Uh, let's move on. Uh, we have FCM token and anyone who's a developer here know what that is. This is a, 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 a string of numbers that is uh, basically assigned to a, a phone device, uh, like a mobile device, and you use this FCM token to send push notifications. So if the user allows for push notifications, for Cityscape to send push notifications, we will save that FCM token string to their data model. We have a timestamp, which represents the date 
the user join and we have a boolean value called checked in basically if a user is checked in somewhere at a location somewhere that boolean will be turned true and this um, data point will be very useful when we're doing searches in our database to see who's actively checked in right now as you can imagine again this sort of data model structures allows us to make certain queries and certain um, uh, visual representations because it's structured in a way to allow that. This is why you must really think of your data structure. Now, if you look at these last four um, items, uh, after talking to William, only one of them survived. Only the street cred value survived. Uh, street cred is basically a, a value, a number value, int stands for integer. So the user could basically have a certain street cred amount. So let's just say they have 100 street cred, that value would be stored to their data object. But when you when you look at stick spots found stamps count connections, these don't exist anymore because um, uh, after talking to William, we found out that since the number of spots the user posts and the number of stamps the user collects and the number of connections the user forms are all going to be in like different. Um, uh, they're going to be in different collections, different uh, different collections throughout the database. We don't need to store them as values in a data object itself because this requires us to keep that data in sync. So rather, what we're going to do is we're going to access that branch and do a collection count and return that collection count to see how many spots the user has found or how many stamps the user has collected or how many connections they've formed. So no more these three items of spot found stamp count and connections again it's just the number of connections the user form those data properties will no longer exist in the data model uh, because we could just do a collection count in a query call itself so it's, it's no point uh, now if you look at right below you have some um, sub collections sub collection is uh, the first sub collection you'll see is uh, footprint the footprints is basically all the locations the user has checked in at. That's their footprint, basically everywhere they've been. And as you can imagine, every location that they go to, they get a stamp. They get a stamp at that location, right? So we could easily get the the stamp count by accessing the footprint sub collection and doing a count on all the documents there. So we don't need the stamp count property because the sub the, the sub collection. Um, we could just do a query count on that. And if you look at the other sub collection we have at the bottom, it's called badges and ranks. And badges and ranks is basically um, as a user uh, finds spots, collects stamps, and meet people, basically form connections, they get badges and ranks. They obtain ranks and get badges for uh, basically being adventurous, you know, going to new places and getting stamps, finding new secret spots, or meeting new people. Uh, they're being adventurous. So the more adventurous the user is, the more badges and ranks they get. And that's going to be stored in that badges and ranks sub collection. So that's the user model. You just saw um, uh, the data model and the collections of data under that data model. Let's move into the next object. The next object we have is spot, is, um, spot which is basically a location. A location has a unique identifier, or an ID, it has a name, it has a description. It has an image URL again, uh, basically an image uh, an image link for what the location looks like. Later is going to be video. It has an owner ID because this location was put up by somebody, right? So the, you can imagine the user has a unique identifier. If the user posts a location in that property called owner ID, the user identifier will be stored as the owner ID. And of course, a spot could be assigned to a world too, right? So a, a, a location could belong to a world. So we could have a location for LGBTQ or you could have a location for um, uh, bikers, right? Remember, a world is a subculture and subcultures have their own location. And if that location belongs to a subculture, the unique identifier for that subculture will be tied to that location as well. Moving on, you have longitude, latitude, which, which are double values. So that it allows for very precise numbers. Uh, that's how. That's basically the coordinate, so we can pinpoint the location on a map. Uh, you have a time spent stamp regarding when the location was created, and lastly, we have two properties: check in count, basically how many people have checked in that location, and connection count, how many connections were formed inside that location. So if people meet at that venue, if two users, if two cityscape users meet inside a location that location's connection count would increase by one. But then again, after talking to William, the check-in count and connection count, we're going to delete because these are sub-collections within the location and we could just do a count on a number of documents in that collection 
and you know retrieve that value itself so we don't need to store it as a data property in the object moving on to the sub collections you have check-ins in history so check-ins basically represent how many people are checked in right now so this sub collection contains all the users that are checked in the location at this moment right and then next you have history history is basically all of people who've ever been at that location so the difference between check-in and history is check-in is real time those are the people that are checked in right now history is all the users who's ever visited a location and you could imagine all these um uh, data will be stored in the sub collection moving on you have a world object a world object is again a world is a subculture and it has a unique identifier with the id which is what it signifies it has a name uh, like lgbtq or tech or surfer or there's so many subcultures out there guys you know um uh, straight edge i was a uh, i was part of the straight edge community for some time i don't know if you guys know the straight edge subculture but straight edge could be a world too it has an image because worlds usually has a symbol that represents them so the image url will basically contain a link to the symbol of that world and it has a background url you have to see the background url image as like a cover image for that world and the last two properties member count and location count we're also going to delete it because every time a world gets a new member right it gets stored in that members sub collection you see that members sub collection below every new member is stored in that sub collection and when a location when a world gets a new location so let's just say you open a store and you say the store belongs to straight edge people well that location id will be stored in a location sub collection too so we don't need to store these um, uh, data points as static properties we could just do a query count again and count all the documents in a sub collection let's move on lastly you have a stamp a stamp is basically what a user get when they check in a location a stamp has an ID, a name, uh, and typically you could name your stamp whatever you want, but by default, it takes the, the, the name of that location. So if you check in a location called Graffiti Pier, your stamp will be called Graffiti Pier. It has an image URL, which could be a custom image of yourself when you check in. Uh, it has a read Boolean. So if you checked out, if you viewed your stamp, it will turn true. If you haven't viewed your stamp, it will remain false. So the, defaults, the default is false. It has an owner ID, which basically represents the person who's checked in, and it has a world ID. So if you checked in a location that belongs to a world, um, uh, there would be a world ID attached to that stamp object. Um, we have other data that me and William find redundant. Uh, the longitude, latitude, that's pretty redundant. So we're going to remove that because uh, if you look at um, uh, a little bit below, you see there's a property called spot ID, which is basically the ID of the location you've checked in. And if we analyze the spot ID, we could get the location, the longitude and that latitude from that spot ID itself. So longitude and latitude might be redundant, so that might get deleted. But we're still keeping city, which is basically, you know, um, uh, as you check in a location, we see what city you in and we allow you to collect stamps in different cities over time. And lastly, timestamp, which is basically when you check in, that's pretty important, right? Because in the future, when you're showing people your travel diary on Cityscape, you want to be able to show them when you've checked in these beautiful locations that you're showing people off. Let's check out the last object. It's a connection. Remember, a connection is two people agreeing to chat and meet um, uh, in a venue. So when you form a new connection on Cityscape, you're literally meeting someone um, right now. And a connection has an ID, of course, a unique identifier. It has a user one and a user two because it's two people uh, meeting. So it has the ID of both these people that are meeting. It has the ID of the location of where, they're, where they've met, right? And it has a longitude, latitude, which, is, which might be redundant because we already have the spot ID, so we know where they're meeting. So the longitude, the latitude might be redundant and a timestamp, which is basically when they met. And again, in a future, when you're going over your memories and you're looking at your connections, you could see like, oh, I've met this person at this location at this time, right? On this day and time. So pretty cool for a travel diary as you check in different locations and meet different people. The connection um, uh, data model, um, there's a big discussion between me and William whether we wanna save um, uh, the user connections and the location connections all in one place 
he's arguing that we don't need different sub collections for it we could keep everything in one place so basically when a user um, uh, forms a connection we could store that in a connection branch and when people are, ch are forming connections inside venues so if you meet someone at a venue that connection that you form at this venue count as a connection for that venue right because that connection happened at that venue so you know you got to increment the connection count of that location right so this is why i have a separate branch for locations but william is arguing that you could just store it all in one branch both the user and the location connections share your thoughts in the comment section i'm sure there's some developers watching this do you think that's easier to just store everything in one branch rather than creating two branches one for user connections and one for location connections share your thoughts and that's it that's all we have for the data model and let's get over to the outro and wrap this up all right guys uh i hope you enjoyed this uh presentation it took a little longer than i expected i didn't think it'd take uh 15 minutes but it is what it is i had to go through these five objects i was just thinking man it's just five data objects couldn't take that long right maybe five minutes but the video ended up being 14 minutes which shows that again data models are not simple stuff uh, you got to be delicate with them and choose them wisely what properties you're going to save how you're going to architecture your uh, collections and sub collections and how many branches you're going to have and how many uh, layers deep you're going to go or are you going to set like a maximum to like okay we're, we're never going to go more than two or three layers deep there's a lot of discussion to be had about data models and how you structure the data in your database. That being said, we wrapped it up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. I'd love to know your ideas, your thoughts, your opinion. Again, um, uh, if you guys want consulting in terms of like you want to put a DAP on the internet computer, you could message me on james at cityscape.com or on Instagram, James Allen Zero. I charge 200 an hour for. Uh, this sort of consulting, if you just want general coaching, 150 an hour, just hit me up for whichever one you want. And lastly, in the next episode, we're going to cover um, authentication and onboarding, right? Uh, very, very important topics when you're dealing with uh, application flow because uh, you have to authenticate the user at some point and how you do it matters a whole lot. And more importantly, you have to onboard them at some point, right? Uh, by onboarding is... Um, you have to set the story of the app. What is the app going to be about? What is this journey going to be about, right? So the, the, the onboarding is where they, they learn the theme of your app and the purpose of your app. So this is super fucking critical step. I actually think authentication and onboarding is a major milestone. So look forward to that. I'm currently working on that right now. And when I'm done, I'll create another episode for it. In any case, my misfits, you know what to do. Don't forget to press that like button and support me on Patreon. I will see you next time.